Hey everybody, I'm Sam the Community Gardener. So today we just want to talk a little bit about what's been going on uh, in the garden. Well, today is I think July the 17th. And I will tell you from July 1st to July 15th, we've had tremendous amounts of rain. Uh, we've had torrential rains that has really had a devastating effect on the garden. Uh, with so much moisture uh, on the ground, uh, we started having problems with um, mites. We, not mice, mites, like spider mites. Uh, we started having uh, problems uh, with uh, all, all kinds of things uh, like uh, fungi, uh, fungus, uh, insects. Uh, the, the moisture has really done a job on us. Uh, so I wanted to just tell you it really, really had a terrible effect uh, on the tomato plants. We had some beautiful, we had several varieties of tomatoes that were uh, growing. And now uh, I'll show you later when we walk through the garden to just kind of show you uh, some of the things that's been going on. So basically one of the, um, when we saw what was going on in the garden, we knew we had to get something, so we went and we got uh, this uh, uh, Garden Safe Fungicide 3. Take a good look at that, guys. This is what we've been spraying throughout the garden. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit about what this product is. It's for organic gardening. Um, it's called Garden Safe Fungicide 3. Three garden products in one. This is considered a fungicide or fungicide. Uh, it's an insecticide and it is a miticide, okay? It, it controls and, and, uh, and block uh, uh, spots of uh, uh, rust and powdery mildew. Uh, it also controls things like aphids uh, and, and white flies uh, and other uh, insect type flies that uh, have, the, have a, a devastating effect on your garden. It also controls spider mites. If you've ever had a garden, uh, you've more than likely experienced uh, some spider mites. So this product uh, is not very expensive uh, and it seemed to be uh, doing the job. It's for use on not just gardens uh, for food, but also for uh, flowers like roses and house plants, uh, ornamental trees and things of that nature, as well as shrubs and fruits and vegetables. Uh, in and around the house here. So we've been using this product and I think that it has had a, a really uh, positive effect thus far. We're gonna see if we can get some other production out of the garden before the summer is over. Another product that we've been using guys, you know, we wanted to, to grow uh, a, a, a variety of tomatoes this year. So another product that we use is called Organic and natural tomato and vegetable food 769. Take a look at that guys This product I, I think it had a really really good effect on our tomatoes We had quite a few of, of, of various varieties from jumbo tomatoes all the way down to something called uh, Candyland and even a, a black Tomato it starts off red, but turns completely black. It's called a midnight snack tomato uh, we did, we, we managed to get some of those uh, out of the garden before the rains came and, and just had a devastating effect on us. So guys, this particular product is uh, organic and natural. It's called Tomato and Vegetable Food 769. Uh, it is a uh, fertilizer. It's a protein-based uh, nitrogen uh, uh, for a bountiful harvest uh, of tomatoes and vegetables. It's very, very easy. Uh, all in one, uh, 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 it's all in one uh, uh, fertilizer. So we really were fortunate. This is a small, this is a four pound bag. Uh, as you can see, we probably used two pounds of it. Uh, but uh, as I said, before the rains came, we had a tremendous uh, number of tomatoes that were doing very, very well. As the rains came and put too much moisture or so much moisture uh, in the garden, it just really, really, had a, a, a terrible effect on on our garden so I'm, I want you to stay with me and here in a little bit we're going to walk through the garden and I'll tell you some of the things that's been going on uh, so hey guys if you like the videos that I'm posting please hit that like button and then go and subscribe to it so that you'll be aware 
when new videos are posted. So guys, I'm Sam the Community Gardener. I want you to stay with me. When I come back, we're going to walk through the garden and show you some of the things that's going on. Okay, have a great day now. Stay green, everybody. Okay guys, so we're here now and just kind of looking out over the garden. I'm going to start over here and show you uh, the mint. Uh, you know, every year we grow a tremendous amount of mint so that we can sell it, but we also keep some to make tea. So all of what you're seeing down here is mint. Now early on, when the rains first started to come, the mint was really, really devastated by it. And it had started to dry up and we didn't really know what to do about it, but we started using uh, diatomaceous earth and some other products that help this mint to start bouncing back. So we still we feel like we'll get uh, enough mint this year to to really um, to sell. And then over here, this is my old faithful here. This is my rosemary bush. The rosemary bush has always produced a lot of uh, rosemary. As you can see right now, it's probably almost time to cut it back. We can't use all of it, but we do uh, manage to get enough to sell. Uh, at the market uh, each uh, each year so that's a good thing it's doing well let's go over here you remember I did a video last year or a few months ago rather on this particular plant this is an echinacea plant now this plant uh, all parts of it is uh, is uh, are very medicinal uh, from the flowers they're beginning to kind of fall back a little bit now but they were very very beautiful let's go around and take a a look around it and kind of see if we can see any of the flowers that are still there but everything from the flowers to the leaves to the stems can be used uh, medicinally read up on the echinacea plant in America they may you may see it listed as the American cone plant but it is very it's done very well although the rain as I said earlier caused it to caused all of the plants to really suffer so let's move around from this now and go and take a look at something else um, this is one of the mullen plants. You all have seen me make videos about the mullen, how we dry it, and, and lots of people uh, request it on an ongoing basis. That tall stem there, that's a seed, it's where the seed pods are. It's time for it to start going to seed now. We've harvested quite a lot of it. You can see some of the leaves down there. These are small leaves compared to the size of the leaves that uh, would be on this particular plant. Here's another uh, bed of uh, mint. Uh, this mint, it didn't suffer as much as the other mint did, but this mint uh, is doing very, very well. So we'll probably be able to harvest just about all of this uh, for sale at the market. You can see some white powder on, I think those are some uh, bean plants. They were being attacked by some kind of insect. So I think what you're seeing down there, we read that bacon soda does a good job, especially when plants have uh, too much moisture. You know, this is uh, moving over here. This is the okra. Now, okra, normally our okra has grown to be six to seven feet tall, but as you can see this year, even though it is producing, it's not producing as much. Let's get a close up so you can see some of the okra plants that have been produced on this particular plant. That is uh, African okra. These plants are only about two and a half, maybe three feet tall. Some of them have gotten as much as three and a half feet tall like these right here, but it's nothing compared to last year. Like I said, this year, the moisture has really, really done a job uh, on uh, all of the plants, really. Uh, down here, coming down a little lower, you see where the white powder, again, that's probably baking soda. As I said, it really uh, helps a lot of uh, the, get the moisture uh, from the plants um, you see how dry they are they look dry even though it's been raining a lot it got too much rain and it was devastated by all of the moisture one of the things we plant every year if you'll look here this is a Mexican sunflower plant it uh last year it got about six or seven feet tall this year it's kind of stopped at about four feet tall, but I think the rain also, uh, it's a very beautiful plant. Let's zoom in on one of the, one of the uh, flowers there. As you can see, it's a very, very beautiful uh, flower and the honeybees and the hummingbirds really, really love. And I recorded quite a few of the hummingbirds coming around to, to uh, I guess, eat from this particular plant. Let's move down a little further you're still seeing okra now and down on the bottom is still the purple hull peas you can see how dry they look and how devastating that they've been by all of the moisture 
it was just I mean every single day it wasn't just light rain we had torrential rains that were I mean almost every single day so let's move around now and I, I told you that the plants that were devastated the most were the tomato plants so let's go over and take a look at some of the tomato plants and we'll talk about some other plants as well but I want you to certainly see see how terrible these tomato plants look look how dry they are now the rain really did it got way too much moisture many of them started to fall off you can still see a few tomatoes uh, on the plants but for the most part they were devastated by all the rain this one still has quite a few these are like cherry tomatoes or uh, some other small variety it's still a few on here but it's nothing compared to what should be on here. Like I said, the rain really did a job. Well, it was the moisture. We like the rain, but sometimes when we get way too much, and there's still a few on there that can probably be picked and eaten. So we'll probably do that later. One of the things that really didn't get so affected by the rain too much was the hot peppers. Let me take you down and look at some of the hot peppers, guys. These are cayenne, either cayenne or but look at that guys these are going to turn red like this one you see this red one here all of them are going to turn red like that and we'll just and and look at that look at these plants they are just loaded with hot peppers here's another one over there loaded with hot peppers so we're very very pleased with the peppers they've done very well and here's some other plants some other pepper plants these are hot peppers. Uh, we, we sell those as well, but we also use them to make pepper sauce. Uh, we also planted uh, this year some green peppers. Let me show you one of the green peppers here. This is one of the green peppers. It actually has a plant on it, a pepper on it now. Uh, if you can see that, there's a pepper there. And it's, uh, they didn't do as well as we wanted them to. But hey guys, uh, as I said earlier, the rain, the moisture, really did a job uh, on on the on the the garden here's another little green pepper plant it has a small pepper on it it'll probably grow to mature but like I said everything is growing much slower because of because of too much rain I told you guys earlier that we had some black tomatoes let me see if I can show you a couple of them uh, here right here I wanted to just show you guys this. These are some of the black tomatoes that I told you guys about. They'll turn completely black. They'll start off red, but they'll turn completely black. Here's a couple of more down here on the bottom here. If you can look close up there, see how black those are? But those are, that's a variety of tomato called Midnight Snack. They don't get very big, but they turn completely black. And we just kind of wanted to experience that because we'd never really eaten. It still has quite a few uh, tomatoes on it. And we'll probably get a chance to eat some of those. But as I said, guys, the rain and the so much moisture really did a job on the garden. Here's a beautiful sight, though, if you like the brown-eyed Susan flowers. We grow some of these every year as well. Look at that. They're still beautiful, even though they were, see how they're leaning down? The rain knocked them down, and but they're still trying to show their beauty, so we're, we're very pleased with that. But hey guys, as I said, this year the garden has not done as well as we wanted it to do. There's another plant out here that I want you to see. It's a flower plant. Um, I want to show it to you here. Isn't that the most beautiful sight? Now... These were actually planted probably more than 20 years ago. And they really, really showed out this year. I'll probably cut them back once all of the beautiful uh, flowers uh, uh, falls off. But they did very well. I went in and I did some, uh, cut out some old roots and different things to try and help them this year. And I think what I did probably did help because look at that. It's quite a few of them, you know. Yeah, we love this. So guys, listen, I'm going to come right back to you and bid you guys goodbye. Uh, like I said, it's cooling off here down in central Georgia. It's probably in the mid-70s now. Uh, so 
You bear with me and I'll be back to just bid you guys goodbye, okay? So guys, you've just walked with me uh, through the garden and I showed you what the moisture has done to the garden this year. Uh, but even though it got a lot of moisture and many of the plants did, have not done very well, we always look forward to next year. P pretty soon, probably late August, early September, we'll start getting the garden ready for the cold weather uh, crops uh, like, like cabbage, uh, asparagus, and things of that nature. So, uh, you know, God, God wasn't with us this year on the, on the garden, but he's been with us with so many other things. So we're very, very happy with uh, what we were able to get out of the garden this year. And of course, we'll, we're looking forward to getting ready for the cold weather plants. So, hey guys, I'm Sam the Community Gardener. If you like these videos, please hit like and go down and subscribe so that you can be kept aware uh, and alert of when we will be putting on or putting up new videos. I'm Sam the Community Gardener. Stay green, everybody. I'll see you next time in the garden.